Hey Stella here. Today I'm going to talk about the greatest movie soundtracks of all time. My criteria for the best soundtrack is very simple. First, it has to be a good movie. Second, the soundtrack music has to be very good itself, regardless of the movie. And finally, the movie and the soundtrack has to fit each other very well, and the movie and soundtrack kind of elevates each other. By the way, I need to point out that this list is about movie soundtracks, not film score. A soundtrack is a collection of songs that are played in a film. The songs may be pre-existing or original, but they are not composed specifically for the film. Uh, a field school is an original and usually instrumental music composed specifically for the film by a composer. By the way, I, I kind of just asked the AI uh, what's the difference between field school and a soundtrack, so I just kind of repeated what the AI told me. <laughs> oh my god, the world is so blurred without glasses! So in this video, I will not mention some of the film score that I really like, such as Annie Morricone, once Upon a Time in the West, the Good and Bad and Ugly, and also Nina Rota's film score for Fellini. So the director, Sofia Capella, is a big fan of My Bali Valentine, so she invited Kevin Shoes to work for the soundtrack of Lost in Translation. And then uh, Kevin Shoes contributed four songs to the soundtrack alongside uh, My Bali Valentine's Sometimes. I feel like Lost in Translation can be used to describe shoegaze and dream pop music in general, and soft, hazy sounds about internal emotions that cannot be verbally expressed or translated. And I'm gonna say that again, that shoegaze music and urban Japan fit so incredibly well. Other than my buddy Valentine, this soundtrack also features French electronic group Air and Phoenix, also Death in Vegas, the English electronica Square Pusher, Japanese folk rock band Happy Ends, and the Jesus and Mary Chain. I think this dream pop and shoegaze based soundtrack not only depicts the loneliness and alienation and cultural shock of the two characters in the foreign metropolis very well, but also uh, makes the chemistry between Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson more delicate and touching. Also, I really like the ending scene with the Jesus and Mary Chains, Just Like Honey. Okay, I don't know how many people have seen this movie. This is a sci-fi movie by my favorite film director, Wing Wenders. So the director, Wing Wenders, requested his personal favorite bands, uh, Talking Heads, Lou Reed, Ken, R.E.N., Elvis Costello, Nick Cave, Patti Smith, Depeche Mode, U2, etc. And to write a song that sounds like the future, to imagine what the band would sound like a decade later, which is when the film was set. So U2 and R.E.N. offered outtakes from their recent hit albums, which are Acton Baby and the album Out of Town, an album that I like a lot. And I am the biggest R.E.N. fan in China. <laughs> just, just kidding. And Talking Heads and Ken recorded some of their final songs as a band for this soundtrack. Pitchfork reviewed this album as What's remarkable about the album, however, is its consistency despite a variety of artists and sounds. Its tone is forlorn, almost decadent in its melancholy, which manifests in a strange, uneasy shimmer that runs through so many of these songs. If all the above still doesn't entice you about this soundtrack, I don't know what will. And it's an amazing movie as well. Whoa, whoa. You know I'm almost grown. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, and I'm doing all right in school. American Graffiti tells the story of a group of teenagers and their adventures over the course of a night set in Modesto, California in 1962. I remember I watched this movie, I think when I was 17, which is which was a similar age to the characters in this movie. And I was having a very typical Asian 17 year old. And so I didn't really get to experience all the fun in this movie, like cruising, partying, drinking, things like that. So I just find this movie quite fascinating, a little bit alien, but also quite fascinating. 
The 41 songs American Graffiti soundtrack are mostly classic rock and roll songs from the 50s, such as Chuck Berry, Buddy Holly, Fast Domino, and also the 60s, The Beach Boys. Generally, just a very great selection of classic rock and roll, and also what the director George Lucas was listening, was listening growing up. <laughs> what boomers were listening growing up. Mr. Train is a movie I think every music nerd should watch. Uh, the movie is set in Memphis, Tennessee, and three individual stories are connected by Elvis Presley and a Memphis hotel. So this soundtrack is like a mix of film score and soundtrack. Uh, the soundtrack has like Rockabilly, Rhythm and Blues by Elvis Presley, Otis Redding, Roy Orbison, The Barkeys, etc. And the film score are like a nocturnal, atmospheric, electric guitar-driven instrumentals by Jim Jarmusch friend uh, John Lurie, who I mentioned in the No Way video. I realized the scenes where Blue Moon by Elvis Presley is playing in this movie is like among my favorite scenes ever. I remember once I was staying at a hotel and I just <laughs> and I just played Blue Moon by Elvis Presley just to <laughs> Joe's drummer of The Clash got styled as Elvis in this movie, and Screaming Jay Hawkins acted as a hotel clerk in this movie, which is both really hilarious. Jim Jarmusch often has like music stars act in his movies, such as Iggy Pop, Tom Waits, RZA, and The Wife's Drives. By the way, New Young's film score for Jim Jarmusch's movie That Man is pretty amazing. Definitely check it out if you have listened. And personally, I can really relate to the characters in Jim Jarmusch movies. I, I feel like they, they, they are just a little bit like me, I think. <laughs> I think if one day Jim Jarmusch needs like a very totally untrained amateur actress to act as an artist's low fan, I think I'm a good fit. In the Move for Love is a romantic drama directed by Hong Kong director Wong Kar Wai. Uh, the movie is set in 1960s British Hong Kong, a time and place where traditional and modern and oriental and western meet. And the soundtrack is pretty much an accurate uh, representation of that. You got like 1940s Chinese pop ballads, Shanghai jazz, Beijing Opera, and also Spanish songs by Nat King Cole, and also some of the original film score by the Japanese composer, uh, what's the name? <laughs> Shigeru Unebayashi. <laughs> also, the soundtrack does a very good job playing of the hidden, unspoken lust and desire between the two characters. Wong Kar Wai grew up in the 1960s Hong Kong, and these songs kind of made up his childhood memories. And I also feel like this soundtrack feels very Hong Kong to me. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm going to visit Hong Kong next week, and so I'm planning to listen to this soundtrack <laughs> when I'm in Hong Kong. Yeah. Wong Kar Wai is another movie, Chongqing Express, also has very interesting use of songs. Imagine the song California Dreaming by the Mama and Papas, also the Cranberries and Cocktail Twins playing with the scenes of Hong Kong streets. And they are used very, very well, and I must say that Wong Kar Wai is very good at using music. Okay, I'm gonna keep this one relatively brief. I watched this movie a long time ago and I have forgot a lot, but I remember I really liked this movie. Uh, so, La Double Vie de Véronique uh, is a drama film directed by Polish director Krzysztof Gislowski. <laughs> the main characters are music teacher and soprano, so music plays an important role in this movie. The soundtrack was scored by Polish composer Zdigniew Brezna. This is the first time I tried to speak Polish in my life. <laughs> It's kind of like opera music. Anyways, both the soundtrack and movies are really good. Definitely check it out if you haven't, haven't seen or listened. I don't, by the way, is this soundtrack or film score? I don't know. Come join us in Counter Patreon to get 10% off of Criterion Collection. Thank you very much. Ah, Blue Velvet. I really love this movie. I actually got this outfit inspired by the movie Blue Velvet. 
Half of these soundtracks are composed by Angela Badalamenti, and the other half are like pre-existing vintage pop songs. Blue Velvet is the first movie that David Lynch worked with Angela Badalamenti, who also composed for Twin Peaks and many other David Lynch projects. For Blue Velvet, David Lynch requested Angela Badalamenti to write a score that had to be like Shostakovich, be very Russian, but make it the most beautiful thing, and but make it dark and a little bit scary. Another funny thing is that David Lynch told the producer, You get that thing, man? There are 27 zillion songs in the world. I don't want one of them. I want this song. And he was referring to a song to the siren by this motor coil, which is David Lynch's all-time favorite song. Actually, the 80s 4AD goth ethereal sound fits David Lynch very well, and David Lynch and Koto Twins are like a match in heaven. <laughs> However, at the end, David Lynch didn't really get the song. Instead, uh, he got Mysteries in Love, composed by Angela Badalamenti. I also really like the scenes where In Dreams by Roy Orbison is playing in this movie. And Dennis Hopper gave really, really great performance in this movie. Apocalypse Now is an astonishing, stunning, and epic film. Obviously, there are two highlights of this soundtrack that everyone talks about. One is the song The End by The Doors, and the other is classical music of Richard Wagner's Ride of Valkyries, together with a marching scene of helicopters, which is really amazing. And the rest of the soundtrack is a mix of dialogue scrap, jungle noises, and war sounds, which is pretty much just like listening to the movie itself, recreating the twisted, bleak, hallucinogenic atmosphere of the movie. As Roger Ebert commented on this movie, Apocalypse Now is the best Vietnam film, one of the greatest of all time, because it pushes beyond the others into the dark places of the soul. It is not about war so much as about how war reveals truth we would not be happy to discover. Two thousand one, A Space Odyssey, the nineteen sixty eight sci fi by Stanley Kubrick, is one of my favorite films of all time. I remember the first time I watched it, I was completely in awe and captivated by it. <laughs> I just have never seen anything like this, and never seen anything like this ever since. At first, Stanley Kubrick commissioned the Hollywood composer Alex North to compose for 2001 A Space Odyssey, who had also previously composed Kubrick Stop Spark Spartacus. <laughs> However, during the post production, Kubrick chose to abandon Alex North's music in favor of classical music. On YouTube, there are some videos displaying how 2001 A Space Odyssey would, would be like uh, with the original score of Alex North. You can check it out if you're interested. Compared to the original score by Alex North, the classical music by Johann Strauss and Richard Strauss is more timeless, more transcendental, more objective, more monumental, and more euphoric. Not that the original score is bad, it just doesn't really have a wow effect that really really makes the movie. It's kind of expected and safe, like what would you expect from a 60s Hollywood score. It's big, but it's not grand enough for a movie like 2001 Space Odyssey. Anyways, I think language just cannot describe how classical music is really used so well in 2001 A Space Odyssey. It's kind of beautiful, majestic space and universe. How would Richard Strauss feel that most people nowadays actually discover this song uh, also struck Zarathustra from a movie? It's almost like God commanded Richard Strauss to write a score in 1896, that would be perfect for a movie about space 72 years later. <laughs> the movie and the song just fit so perfectly. And supposedly, Richard Strauss was inspired by the German philosopher Nietzsche, and then he wrote this score. Okay, enough about 2001 Space Odyssey. I, I don't think I can really say anything more interesting that people haven't really spoke about before. Anyway, 
Yeah. What a movie and what a soundtrack. The whole soundtrack is also a masterpiece, and the movie is just once in a lifetime experience. And I, yeah, I kind of want to check it out again soon. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Also, the use of classical music in Clockwork Orange is pretty interesting too. If you know me personally, then it's probably not at all surprising that I put Paris, Texas into number one. It's like my favorite movie of all time, and none of the any other movies even come close. Yeah, not even 2001 Space Odyssey. Dave Grohl said that this soundtrack is his favorite album, and this, and this movie is actually also Kurt Cobain's and Alice Smith's favorite movie. Also, there's an author called Alain de Boudon, also said that this movie is his personal favorite. Also, this movie won the prize of Pound d'Or at the 1984 Cannes Film Festival. So yeah, if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out, and you won't regret it, I promise. This soundtrack is by Roy Cooder, and it's mostly of acoustic guitar instrumentals. I would say what's outstanding about the movie and the soundtrack is that it evokes a very peculiar feeling a desolate and barren landscape, but it's also hauntingly beautiful and strangely comforting. And this soundtrack, I would say it works better if you have already seen the movie with contest. And the slight guitar also has a very ghostly, uneasy vibe to it. I remember once I set the starting roof as my notification sound for receiving messages, <laughs> and my roommate at the time was like, could you please change that? That is so scary and creepy. <laughs> and personal favorite song of the soundtrack is No Safety Zone, Houston in Two Seconds, She's Leaving the Bank, and there is also this eight minute long monologue by, by the actor Harry Stein Stanton. This movie has a very well written screenplay, and the screenwriter of this movie, uh, Sam Shepard, also acted in a movie that I really like called Days of Heaven. A while ago, I found that uh, Sam Shepard had dated John Mitchell and Patti Smith in the 70s. I watched this movie for the first time when I was 16 on a Sunday afternoon, and it has become my personal favorite ever since. Just like some of my favorite music, Payments, Alex Smith, and after all these years, they have all become part of my DNA. I have cried to Paris, Texas soundtrack during some very isolating and lonely periods of my life, and I have also enjoyed it with blissful content. This movie has not only lingered me for hours, for days, for weeks, but also for years. <laughs> At the end, I want to mention some of the movie soundtrack that is kind of close to the music featured on my channel. Goodwill Hunting, The Perks of Being Warflower, Trainspotting, Vanilla Sky, Velvet Gold Mine. Okay, that's about my list of best soundtracks. If you, if you got any good soundtracks that you would like to recommend, please comment down below. Also, I am aware that I have omitted some of the good choices, it, either because I haven't really seen the movie, or just because it's not really... I don't like it as much as the 10 that I mentioned today, either, either the soundtrack or the movie. And I want to thank my Patreon support, uh, thank you very much. Okay, I think that's about today's video, and the first thing I'm gonna do is to drink water over there. Yeah. <laughs> See you, bye bye!